David Jones here on the Mayo Media Network. It's week three of me talking to you about the showdown slate, so I guess it's getting pretty serious. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tenacious D Jones. You can follow my work at FTN Daily, at FTN Bets, at FTN Fantasy. We also have FTN Data in there. There's a lot of FTN going on. We are taking over. Thanks for coming along with us. You're watching this on YouTube, most likely, or listening to the podcast. Please smash the like button. Do me a solid. Do Pat a solid. No dislikes, please. We do not like the dislikes or the thumbs down, whatever you want to call them. We're talking about Thursday Night Football on DraftKings. I'm sorry to say it's the Denver Broncos versus the New York Jets, two 0-3 teams. But hey, we have football back. We can't complain too much. I don't want to see any negativity on Twitter uh, because football's here. Even though we have a game, maybe two games, going to be postponed this Sunday, we still have someone throwing a football, and that is fine with me. Let's jump into this slate and figure out where we're going to go. So you have to choose your captain position. Typically, I like that to be a pass catcher on DraftKings because of the one-point PPR structure. Up at the top, Melvin Gordon. Denver Broncos, top running back. Yes, you probably have Philip Lindsay coming back, injury-prone Philip Lindsay. Really uh, really played great for him when they did not have a, a starting running back a year and a half ago, but he's going downhill. That's why they brought Melvin Gordon on board to carry the lion share of the targets out of the backfield and on the ground. Last week, Melvin Gordon, he only got eight touches on the ground, but he was targeted six times through the passing game. I think you can see a lot of Melvin Gordon in this game, especially because you have the third-string quarterback for the Denver Broncos, Brett Rippon, coming in to rip the ball to the depleted wide receiver core um, and the depleted team. There's a lot of injuries on both these teams, to be quite frank. I don't typically like to spend up, but Melvin Gordon, $16,500 at captain, does make sense for this particular slate this week because you have so, so, so many cheap options. You can build just about any team you want with any captain you want. And Melvin Gordon, he's going to be my favorite captain. I think he can get in the end zone once, maybe twice. And he's going to catch probably as many balls as uh, most of the receivers here. I don't think Rippon's going to just be ripping it down the field. That's the second time I've used that. But I'm going to use it again later on in the show. Just you watch. Melvin Gordon, 16-5, is my favorite captain. Underneath him, you have Sam Darnold, 15000 nine hundred dollars he looked terrible against the colts he he made the colts defense be on the winning gpp lineups which was great for me i had a lot of colts defenses last week but are is denver going to be able to replicate that and keep picking off sam darnold for six points probably not going to do it twice or three times whatever he did last week i think it was twice maybe a safety something like that or fumble i don't know it was bad um so maybe we look at the denver broncos defense a little more but look sam darnold he knows he's got to play better. He's got to match up against the Denver Broncos, who have a lot of injuries on defense, too. He's okay, but I do not think I want him in my captain spot. Underneath him, you have the third-string quarterback for the Denver Broncos starting, Brett Rippon. Do we want to play him? I thought he looked decent last week. I know he threw an interception. I know he fumbled the ball. But he went 8-for-9. I mean, that's pretty respectable being thrown into the NFL. Now he's going to get his first career start. He was a, a good player over at Boise, no doubt about it. But this is the NFL. Can he do it? He's going to be missing Cortland Sutton, of course, who's on the injured reserve list. So he's going to have Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, K.J. Hamler, Noah Fant, maybe some Deshaun Hamilton, and Melvin Gordon to throw to. Not really a lot of options. Uh, he's okay. He might be too expensive. I'll probably reserve him for flex. But I won't reserve Noah Fant for flex. I like Noah Fant a lot, too. He's my second, second favorite captain. With these quarterbacks that come in uh, that have not played in a lot of games before, you tend to, see, tend to see them check down a lot. Noah Fant can be that guy. He's going to be the safety blanket for the Denver Broncos quarterback. This week, I think last week, he was targeted 10 times. That's a lot of targets. He really could be. He probably will be the most targeted pass catcher for the Denver Broncos. That makes me like him a lot, especially since you get one point per catch on DraftKings. That adds up quick in that captain spot. Underneath him, Jerry Judy. Excuse me, I skipped Jamison Crowder because of that questionable tag. My eyes just went past it. Jamison Crowder's probably going to play. He practiced. We have to make sure that he's going to play. I think he is. He had a fantastic week one. I mean, he absolutely went off. He won some people a lot of money. I think he was on the Millie Maker Winning lineup against Buffalo. He got the ball seven times on 13 targets, 115 yards uh, for 27.5 points, and he's getting a worse defense. But he's a little beat up. However, 
if he's going to be in the game, you have to think that he's going to be playing the entire thing unless he gets re-injured. I don't want him at captain. I don't think he didn't make my top four captain list, but I would love to use him at flex. I think he's a great flex, flex play. Jerry Judy is underneath Crowder. He's going to be the wide receiver one in this offense uh, with Cortland Sutton out especially. I thought that was a great tandem. It's too bad about Sutton. He caught five of his targets for 55 yards last week. I've said it before, I think Jerry Judy's the most talented wide receiver coming out of the draft class, and I think the years that go by will prove that. His route running is just immaculate. He has not gotten in the end zone yet, but he is a candidate to do that coming up this week. So he's got big big play upside. That's what you want, and he's going to be catching passes. Um, so he is ranked as number three on my, uh, on my captain list. I've got Melvin Gordon, one. I've got Noah Fant, two. And I've got Jerry Judy, three. Underneath him, old man Gore, 37 or 38 years old, and he's still doing it. And he still looks the same. We've all seen the memes. $9,600 at the captain spot. I don't think I want him there. He will catch no passes. However, he will touch the ball 15 plus times. Uh, you, you've got to try and win this game, and I think Frank Gore is actually going to give you a decent chance to do that. He's not going to sprint for a 60-yard touchdown, but he's going to steadily kill the clock, steadily move the chains, and if they get down in the red zone, he's getting a shot at it. If he gets in the end zone, you're looking great. I don't think he gets in there twice. Maybe he gets in there once. I like Frank Gore a lot at the flex position. Philip Lindsay, below him, questionable 9,300 in the captain spot. Not going to do it. I, he's still a little beat up, in my opinion. He doesn't play great when he's a little beat up. No one plays great when they're a little beat up. But he might be forcing it into this game. And I don't see why you would go away from Melvin Gordon, quite frankly. He's healthy. He's the better back. He catches the passes. He runs the ball. Much better than Philip Lindsay. I think Philip Lindsay's uh, ownership's going to be down because he's got that questionable tag. But it's not something I am too interested in, especially not on a main lineup. Now we're starting to get down to some cheap guys. I mean, Kalen Balaj is the next guy on the list who's actually going to see playing time out of the backfield as more of a pass catcher. Don't have a ton of interest in him. Last week he had five receptions, um, which was the second most, it totaled up to be the second most receiving yards for the Jets. Uh, but they were so far behind. I think this game stays closer, stays low scoring. It's a pick em in Vegas, and they don't need to lean on Balaj as much. Um, he might catch three or four, and if he breaks a big play, then it's going to be a good play. Not one of my favorites. If I make 10 lineups, I'll throw him in like two. Broncos defense is underneath him at 8-4 in the captain position. So what the Jets did last week, uh, you know, two pick sixes for the Colts. They scored the most points on DraftKings at the defensive position. Uh, you can play the Broncos here. I mean, they should get a few sacks. Um, are they going to get two pick sixes? No, I don't think so. Sam Darnold better be more careful with the ball, um, but they're certainly an option. I, I, I do like playing one of the defenses in this match. I lean Broncos because I lean Broncos to win the game, even though it's in New York, even though they have a third-string quarterback. I think they have better skill players. The Broncos are okay. Tight end Chris Herndon for the New York Jets is next up, 8,100 on DraftKings. Expected a bigger season out of him so far. Last week, five targets, four before that, seven before that. He's only caught the ball 10 times total, has not even equaled over 100 yards for the season. But Sam Darnold needs to get this guy going. The matchups have not been easy for him against Indy, against San Fran, against Buffalo. This is certainly going to be his easiest matchup. I think it's okay to punt Herndon even at like the, the captain spot. If you made 10 teams, maybe put him on one of the captain spots because you're looking for someone who might be lower owned, who started slow like Herndon, like a Judy, to take you to the promised land and win you the big money. He is my fourth captain that I am interested in, so that's on down the line. I think he's a good flex play, especially for how expensive he is. So I'm going to switch over from the captain pricing because I have no more interest in any more captains on here. But we're going to talk about some of the wide receivers. You've got Brashad Perryman out. Um, Tim Patrick is going to be in here playing the wide receiver two role, two or three, probably more of a three because K.J. Hamler, I prefer him. Tim Patrick, uh, he got four for a tutty last week. He's going to be targeted again here. He's priced up right there with K.J. Hamler. K.J. Hamler's $200 less expensive, which might mean more people play Hamler because he's a little bit cheaper. Or actually, it might mean if they have the extra $200, they go up to Tim Patrick. That's going to be one of those flip a coin situations for me. I actually prefer Hamler over Patrick, so I would go that way in the flex. 
Um, could one of these guys go off and be your captain? They could. I just have more confidence in the guys I mentioned in Gordon, Judy, Fant, and Herndon as a punt. So those two Broncos wide receivers are fine. They're going to be in the game a lot. You've got the kickers. They're okay. Pick the kicker you think is going to win. I think it's the Broncos. The Jets' D is in there for cheap. Man, they're bad, but you're going against the Brett Rippon, who turned it over twice in limited time. He's probably going to turn it over at least once here. If you think the Jets can go and get that in the end zone, I guess you can play Jets. I don't want to play two defenses on one team. I would lean Broncos, but Jets, if you're making several teams, I guess you can go there. Deshaun Hamilton's going to be coming in at $3,400. He is uh, probably too expensive because we have cheaper options I prefer over him, like Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan's questionable. We think he plays. You have to watch the news. He got targeted three times last game. Caught zero of them the week before. He caught six, though. Uh, He just had an off game. Uh, The passes weren't there. I think Chris Hogan is actually a pretty good play here. I think he's going to get targeted more around that six, maybe even seven range. Um, And he makes a very interesting uh, uh, flex position for me because people might be off of him because he had a bad game last week. He's still going to be in there next to Jameson Crowder and next to Braxton Berrios. He is fine at the flex position. I like him. If we want to keep digging down, if you're looking at Vanette, no, you don't want much of him. Uh, Wesco, who is that? Uh, You're kind of running out of people here. So Berrios... Why do I not see Berrios on here? Where is Berrios' price? Okay, so Berrios' price, somehow I skipped over him, $7,200. That is quite a lot for Berrios, but his last two weeks, he's looked pretty good. He caught all of his targets last week against Indy, 4 for 4 for 64 and a touchdown. And then you have San Francisco the week before that, six receptions with on eight targets for 17 points and uh, 17.9 points and a touchdown. So that's why his price is so high. So is he going to be targeted? Probably the same amount. Yes. Uh, do the Jets need to throw the ball to someone who's going to catch it, not name Frank Gore or Kalen Balaj? Yes. So Berrios is a pretty good play. Crowder wasn't in last week or the week before that, which might have contributed, which definitely did contribute to Berrios getting targeted more. So his price is a little high. But still, you have so much value on this slate, you can go to him if you want. I'm looking over my notes. Did I miss anyone? Not really. We're going to recap it. I think the Broncos win in this Pick'em game. I like Melvin Gordon, number one, at the captain spot. Jerry Judy, two. Fant, three. We need a big game from one of those two Broncos. Uh, And look, I'm excited that we have some football. It's not the teams we wanted, but... Here we are. We're going to watch it, and we're going to cheer for it, and hopefully we get more than 10 points on each side and not a tie. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow me at Tenacious D. Jones on Twitter. Remember to smash the like button. Come over to FTN Daily, FTN Bets, FTN Fantasy, all the FTN stuff. You can press one button and buy all the packages if you want to. We're absolutely crushing it. I'm very impressed with some of the talent over there. Go take a look at the profiles. See the guys over there. Uh, we've got Brad, Brad Evans, Elliot Chris, Magic Sports Guy, Kevin Adams, Jeff Ratcliffe, Noah. The list goes on and on and on. Oh, and some guy named Pat Mayo. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. I'll see you next week.